The last advancements in AI have been amazing, allowing you to generate your own models that can't be implemented with ease in your games. Today I will showcase how I created this 3D project in Godot 100% using AI. This tool even allows you to customize the generation to have more control over it. Indeed, AI is having a huge impact on game development and we'll see a part of its true potential today, so let's get started. Firstly, I will show you the 3D Godot project containing the models created by AI. Of course, we can't expect to have the same results as if they were done by some kinds of professional, but we still have consistent assets matching the same cartoony style with also a consistent width and height that is usually hard to achieve with these kinds of tools. The project itself showcases a small city with road pieces and a custom stone pattern floor with three different types of buildings, two small houses and one taller one as well. Also it has two unique trees to give the project more variety. Finally, it also contains a friendly looking character that you'd even be able to animate if you wanted to make it walk around this cozy city. Yeah, the project may not be that stylish, big or amazing, but its main aim is for you to see the outstanding work that can be done with ease by AI to generate your own 3D models. So this tool that I'm talking about is called Roading, okay, and it is the most advanced AI that you're going to be able to uh, find online since for example over here it does provide uh, three new features that we are going to be discussing in just a second and also if you scroll down you will see a whole marketplace let's say of models that have been completely generated using this tool and well just by taking a look at this you can understand the, the amazing power that uh, Rodin has so actually previously we have checked out Roading a little bit. So, if you want to have a complete tutorial on AI 3D modeling with Roading, you can check out this video that I'm going to be leaving in the description down below. Because, well, of course, there are lots of things that we have to cover, more specifically, these three new ones that are super, super interesting. So, for the most, most basic usage uh, of Roading, you should really check out that video. For example, here right now, let's super quickly generate a new model. But the most important thing here uh, is the fact that you can upload any kind of image. So, for example, I have this image over here. I can click generate. Then here you're going to have this. You have to confirm the geometry. So I will click here confirm. And uh, here we have to say if the generated object is uh, symmetrical. Uh, I don't. I don't think so. So let's click here no. Of course, it is just. Uh, amazing because it really follows the 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 exact uh, geometry and even if you don't like some stuff for example here uh you can go to the uh, mesh editor um and here you'll actually be able to modify the the model itself before uh, exporting all right as you can see now the result is even better so now you can click confirm so now here we have our result and we can then generate uh, the uh, material. Oh, well, now we do see it with the corresponding material. And as you can see, compare the reference, compare the result. It is amazing. And you can always retouch this in Blender or any other software. So we can confirm this result. And as simple as this, we can go ahead and download um, the corresponding model. And this also gives you all the textures and things that you would need to import it into any kinds of engine and also you would be able to um, just throw everything in blender or, or any other similar software and modify and retouch it a little bit to even make it uh, better but as you can see the basics of it the bases are just just quite quite solid now in terms of the new features this is what actually makes rolling stand out because it's something that you're not going to be finding in any other similar platform. And that's the fact that you can provide a, bound, a bounding box, a voxel, and even a point cloud control. So basically, uh, in, in simple terms, these are three options that will allow you to customize even more the actual generation. Um, for uh, all three of the options, you can either uh, handcraft them or also manually upload them. Um, in this case, we are just going to be focusing on handcrafting them. 
So in terms of the bounding box, this is the easiest one. So uh, we're going to be able to create basically the bound the boundaries, okay, um, for our uh, model. So if we, for example, set the height here to be much higher, well, then the model itself will be much higher. Um, we can generate the the how how large is our model, how much width it has, etc. We can um, start over again, okay? Uh, we can basically close this um, menu, sorry, and uh, well, we can rotate a little bit around to see our um, our bounding box even a little bit more. And for example, in the example project, I was using this option to modify a little bit the size of the houses. If I wanted to generate a house that would have uh, two floors, well, then I would increase the height. Um, so that is how this uh, would change the generation. For example, now I will generate a car. So a car, you would usually want it to be quite flat. You don't want to have like a lot of height. You would want it to be maybe something like this, um, maybe a little bit more. Okay, and let's say that I don't want to have a super wide car, so I will do it maybe something like this. Okay, so I don't want to have that kind of a white car, of a white car, and of course it shouldn't be that large. So once I have that done, I will click confirm. And now here I can provide a reference image, okay, or a text input. So we provide here the a super simple prompt that I will create. For example, this one, and I will click here. Oh, well, here we have an example of the generation. We can uh, restart uh, restart it over again to get a different result, or we can confirm it uh, right away. Then let me click over here. And note here how it actually followed the bounding box that I provided. As you can see, it's not that wide. Um, it is not also uh, that tall because you can see that this part of the car is not that kind of spheric as it could be. Um, so indeed, we were able to actually modify this uh, this shape. Uh, so I will, I'm going to confirm this uh, geometry. It seems that it is more or less symmetrical. So I will click there. Yes. Now here I have the material. Quite interesting. So I will confirm it as well. And as simple as this. I do have now my car completely finished with a custom bounding box. I know the good thing is that, for example, if I make in a racing game, I can go over here to the bounding box and use the same sizes that I used before, uh, so that I will have all my cars being, genera being generated with the exact same size that this first one has. Introducing 3D Control Net for Rodan Gen 1. Just drag a bounding box and use it as additional conditioning for your generation. Easily make it flatter. Or control the width, length, and height to make it taller. With 3D Control Net, let AI work for you and make it truly controllable. Now, uh, both... Uh, boxer control and point cloud control will allow you to as you can see here not only as in bounding box to just modify the actual bounding box but to actually provide the exact shape of it that you want so here for example you are able to either handcraft it or to upload okay in both of the options but well anything that you create anything that you manually upload what it's going to do is to uh, convert that model into either voxels or into point cloud control. So, for example, in point cloud control, that is like, I, as far as I have been testing, like, it's like the most accurate one, at least for this, uh, for what I'm going to be doing right now. That is basically uploading a model uh, that I have downloaded. And the only thing that this model has, um, as you can see, is basically a T pose uh, model. So I can confirm this point cloud, and as you can see, the, the actual model is now basically uh, created with these points. So I will confirm that, and uh, then here I can upload um, this image, okay, of the office worker, and I can click um, generate, okay. So the reference image has the character with the arms inside of the pockets, okay, but with the point cloud control. A model that we uploaded, what we're going to be able to do is that um, 
the model in instead of being generated with the character with the hands in the pocket basically it will generate the model in t pose okay the most important thing is the fact that uh, you are able to throw this in mixamo and then animate it and do whatever you want with t pose instead of having it for example like this that it would be literally unusable at least for uh, mixamo animations or quite difficult to actually make it work the generation followed the exact shape of the human model I uploaded, which I did intentionally to show you its ability to control the shape. But anyway, if you want to keep the original character, just remove the gesture because there is another way of making the T or A pose using the advanced settings. So now you can see how actually I was able to auto rig this in Mixamoa and in just a couple of seconds I, I am able to apply mostly any kind of animation that I want to this model. Then I would have to just load in the corresponding textures that are providing once you download the model in the corresponding game engine or 3D modeling software that I may use. So yes indeed, uh, voxel control and point cloud control actually gives you uh, the possibility of controlling more uh, the exact um, features that your model should be having for example in this case we just use them um, to generate the model in a t pose and then animate it but well actually the usages that these can have is endless now with any other base model that you upload you're going to be able to generate new models based in that one that you uploaded having that consistency that is always super important in any kind of game that you create so the idea here is that you always can uh, get more and more control over uh, the models that you create here actually the the images that Rodin provides here to explain how these different uh, options work I, I think that they explain just well what they do so it is on you to actually try them out um, and you can actually see how many people is creating here amazing uh, amazing things uh, with Rodin AI so indeed it is a tool that has been used for many developers and as you can see well you can judge um, the results yourself so yes indeed the AI is getting every day better and better and Rodin is the leading platform behind all this because they are always updating here the platform with these new features and probably in the short term they are all also going to be more interesting things that are going to be worth for you to start checking out so if you want to begin your path in creating your own 3d ai models for your own games in the description down below you are going to be finding a link for you to sign up directly and start using this amazing tool today and in this precise moment so i hope we can see each other in the next one and see you there bye bye